Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, if you missed part one of the fire episode, I'll put a link above, but welcome to part two. I think this one is going to have something like performance art in the title as well as romance. These are the two things that we'll cover and any other things that pop into my mind as we discuss this fascinating topic. Now, last time I think we covered the fact, and I've still got last time's diagram written up here. Last time I think we covered the fact that, you know, the, the flame that is you and I lit a match and I showed you that that flame, and I've still got that broken match right here that didn't light. Do you know what? Why don't we get, why don't we get a fresh match? do this again because it's so good. I've done this in a couple of tarot readings actually because this is such a good thing at showing us the now. I really like contemplating this, that that is my life. It's that flame. And the live wood is the future and the charred wood is dead and gone. And no matter how hard I try, I cannot relight the past. I cannot relive it. I cannot, it's charred, it's dead, it's over, it's finished, right? And the only thing I have is that flame in the present moment. That's me, that's my life. You know, when people are stuck in, when, well, when they're stuck in their lives generally, it might be that the fire element within their chart, there's maybe, or there, there's something, they, they need to get fired up about life again you know there's something that's um that's not going right with the fire element when you've got fire in your life you want to do things you, you want to get on and do things that's the first house here that's mars it's that mars kind of fire you want to do things you know and you feel alive you feel in the present moment as well fire is such an important element how does this work in terms of performance art or that phrase performance art which i should be putting in the title somewhere right okay i was contemplating this because well because partly because of the videos that i'm making right so recently i made that uh, little john lennon in a coffee with john lennon it was like a short film and why was that like a short film because i had written a script and i pretty much just read out the script in those videos. Whereas this, I have no notes, right? I've come completely, I've got a couple of little words on my bullet journal and that, that's as much as I've got. I have no idea what's gonna happen. So that's the flame, that's the fire, that's performance art. I don't know what's gonna happen in this video. I'm doing it as I go, right? So what's the difference? There are big differences. When you've got this kind of fire in your chart as Robin Williams had, right? Robin Williams was a genius with this house. He had a Rahu moon here in Aquarius. I'm pretty sure it's Sattva Bishak. And I don't have his chart up. I've got Oprah's chart up on my screen because we're going to talk about Oprah in a moment and the difference. And I was thinking about Hollywood actors and different types of performers. Now, Robin Williams was a fifth house kind of guy because he never knew what he was going to say. It was never premeditated. It wasn't something he'd thought before. When he would go to interviews, he would be funny with whatever random stuff was in the room at the time. That's what, why he was such a genius. And he was such a genius because he was working and playing with this energy here. And I was thinking about how Hollywood actors, we tend to think of them as having, I've seen this, I've seen that they've typically got a really good second house or they've got a lot of Taurian type energy. They're, they've got stuff happening here. And that's when I was inspired to look up Oprah's chart. I've got her chart here in front of me now and it's really interesting. She's got quite a full second house there in Capricorn Earth sign, right? She's also got Jupiter in Taurus. Now you look at her career everything was written down. Her TV shows were, okay, so that's not Hollywood as such, but Hollywood is like that as well. Movies and acting and all that kind of thing because everything is written down. Everything is scripted. 
everything gets stored right and that's earth earth is about storage right so the performances they they're not live as such things are recorded scripts like the words are written down they're refined they're polished then the performance is captured then that gets refined and polished it has a completely different feel to what's going on here in the fifth so this is a real thing of performance art right and i started to try and think about professions where they depend on live action the one i thought about was like well i thought about this earlier today that like if you're a tour guide you know it's like okay the place is there let's say you're a tour guide of the egyptian pyramids well the place is there but then your work is in the now it depends on people being there you speak you perform for them in a live kind of a way right um what other things are kind of live performance or depend on being in the moment or they can't be stored i was thinking about omar sharif as well he's got a i'm pretty sure he's got a good fifth house if i remember correctly but i know he's a bridge player so like games games are also something that you see um here the the playing of a game um, these are things that can't be stored right um, and that they have to happen in the now so that's really the quality of what we are looking for with these um, with these firehouses we're looking at things happening in the now that is the real key thing and also they're also action dependent on action as well romance is another thing that's that's this house here this beautiful fifth house and of course remember guys when you're looking at this it's not just you're looking at these houses you're looking at aries in your chart you're looking at leo you're looking at the signs as well sag okay so you can look at any of these but let's take a look at this the thing of romance right that's a fascinating fire thing and they always talk about that they always say people always say that well there wasn't a spark or there was a spark right so there's definitely a thing about a spark you have to give it space you have to give it space to breathe to grow right that's another really important concept here if you're far too controlling it's romance is not going to happen or work right just, it doesn't work with that what do we have opposite we have air right this is air here it needs air and that's why this concept of opposites attract is really so brilliant because opposite all these houses you know so you've got air here what do you have opposite here you've got air right so this concept of opposites attract is really quite brilliant especially in this case of fire and air what a terrific pair right they go really really well together fire doesn't do well with limits um, it's it's not so good then and it's really interesting that water is a thing that immediately puts a fire out and i was thinking about this because water in the tarot is emotions and you think about it a, a deeply emotional person if you're in these deep waters here uh, there can be grief there can be sadness there can be you know and, and if you're way too down in the dumps or in grief or whatever you can't you can't engage this you can't enjoy this romance the potential for romance that is here you can't it's very difficult right um, mind you the people who have a lot of this kind of deep water this deep scorpionic water uh, can be so amazing 
when it comes to romance and when it comes to fire and that spark and all that beautiful stuff. You know, they're so deep that, well, I suppose they've figured out all kinds of things. Hi everyone, I'm just editing the video and I've realized that I forgot to mention a very important point about romance and fire and the connection with what's happening here in the chart. Now this is an old chart that's just stuck on my screen but we can use it for this purpose. As you can see I've indicated fire here and the point about romance that I didn't mention was that a good romance when it works really really well is one in which you become each other's best student. You study the other person really very well. That's a classic thing that's known in literature, self-development, psychology, all that kind of thing. It's very well known that you become each other's best students. Now where do the best students live? I believe they live definitely here in the ninth. There's all that fire there and as well here these are the kind of self-taught people. Uh, I always tend to think of this as self-taught education whereas this is very formalized education. But as you can see, people with great fire energy are good romantics simply because they are brilliant at studying the other person and becoming the very best student in that other person's life. You study the person so well, you know who they are, you know what makes them happy and you do everything in that regard. So that was the little bit that I wanted to add. It's just fascinating, isn't it? I love contemplating the elements. But that is what I have for you today. I think I'm going to keep this one nice and short. If I come up with more um, insights on fire, I'll of course put a little video together and share that with you. But this is just some food for thought. This concept of performance art I thought was really interesting. Um, and that, that concept of you know different professions that rely on being in the now. And there are many of those. Teaching as well. Teachers perform. You know, when they're up in, there in front of students, lighting up those minds one by one, that's something that happens in the now. Um, and hopefully that, that tradition continues of living wisdom, of, you know, and Jyotish used to be like that. I think, well, Vedic wisdom used to be like that. It, it was always an oral tradition. It was always handed down in the now. It wasn't recorded. It wasn't stored. And that's earth. We're the kind of culture that records everything now. We write everything down. Uh, and that's a slower energy. That's a slow moving energy, earth. Fire is very fast. Yeah, things catch on like wildfire. The other thing about fire I was thinking about was, um, was that it's wild and dangerous. And of course that's what makes you know, romance exciting as well, right? Um, it's that danger element, which is so interesting. But yeah, things catching on like wildfire. Fire can go out of control. The risk associated with fire it's risky, actually, there's a brilliant teacher. Um, gosh, what's his name? Michael Sandel. I'll put a link below. Hopefully, if I remember, I'll put a link below. His Justice series is just fantastic. And he's a great, great teacher because he says to his students, and he, he performs. He performs. It's live. It's fresh. It's interesting. It's fascinating. And he said to his students that my teachings come with a warning because... You, you can't, once you know it, you can't unknow it, right? And that's this kind of fire here. Um, yeah, once you've learnt it, you can never go back to that, that time of innocence where you didn't know, right? And he, I love that he gives a warning in his lecture. It's the first lecture that he gives. I'll link to that below. It's such a good, fascinating lesson. But that's a very Sagittarian fire type thing uh, that's going on there. So guys, I think I've covered everything on this topic for now. If there's more to talk about fire, I will certainly 
put together a video and you'll be able to find it in the playlist. So thank you so much for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you next time.